cells. Calcium is the same thing bone is made of calcium. So you'll always see a calcium stone on a plain old-fashioned x-ray. Right. Okay. And of course, you'll, you'll see it also on a sonogram, and you'll see it on a CAT scan. It's not going to disappear. It's not going to dissolve. The only stones we can, can dissolve is uric acid stones with two medications for, take for a month and dissolve the stone that's in the, in the kidney. So it's not going to disappear. Why they couldn't see it, it may be ultrasound overlying gas. They couldn't see this, the, the stone too well, the, the body <coughs> habitus of the person. And an ultrasound is good for stone disease. But a lot of people come to the office and say, here's my ultrasound. I have uh, possibly, it says shadowing, possible, maybe stone here, left, right, upper portion. It's the attempt of the radiologist to you know, try to interpret what they see on the ultrasound. Kidney ultrasound is very important, very good, but the final, at the end of the day, you say, listen, go for a CAT scan. I, it'll tell me so much more. I have to know the exact size. It may not even be a stone. It could be a calcified structure within the kidney. So that's why you get an ultrasound that says con possible, consistent with, probable, get a CAT scan. No, that's not a, a stone. Uh, you no, did come. mention breaking up of, uh, of the stones. Is that a possibility? Yes, that's part of the treatment. If the person is not obstructed in the emergency room and you found the stone in the kidney, or maybe the stone is in the tube and it's partially obstructing, and yes, we can offer outpatient stone blasting under anesthesia to fragment the stone. Very effective, stones that are not too big, it could be a small stone that's too dense, so it's not 100%, but it's very effective and used often. Yes, I'm sorry, yes. I might have answered the question. Are they still using acoustic waves to break up stones with the patient in the bathtub? Well, similar. We've gone, the bathtub, we don't, there's no bathtub anymore. But we just put a water gel uh, structure, balloon, next to the kidney and send a shock wave of electricity focused right on the stone to blast it with minimal uh, derangement to the normal kidney structure. Next question. How often does the Botox treatment have to be repeated? Uh, it's variable how much, depending on the response the person gets. It could be every year, but depending on the, the response that the person gets. Is there anything in the pipeline uh, for these, all these things you mentioned? That a new research, a new development that we can expect? For which? Uh, uh, but say that uh, for the prostate. Prostate. Um, there's always new medications that are coming out. You know, new medication because that's what <coughs> pharmaceutical companies do. They want to make new medications, so, so doctors prescribe new medications. But like I said, we're using, for prostate cancer, we're using something that was discovered 60 years ago. And it's keeping men alive. We have a pill to shrink the prostate. It's sold, used, prescribed, very ineffective. Okay. We have, we have ref so new medications are coming out. New treatments are always coming out. I mean, then after whatever, months or years, we often hear, oh, no. That treatment it, it was really never that effective. We thought it was more effective, uh, but we're going to another treatment. So, yes, new treatments come out. We get rid of old ones, or we continue old ones in, in medications. Uh, we, we're using, originally it was a blood pressure pill that we were using in urology 40 years ago to help a man urinate with a better flow because we saw a side effect from lowering the blood pressure. It was relaxing the prostate, relaxing the blood vessels, it relaxed the prostate too. So we refined that and we have one that's more focused on the uh, prostate that we're using to help a man urinate better. So we do have medications that, are, are, that we use. I mean, Viagra originally was designed, was created, was discovered, was used to um, dilate the blood vessels of the heart. Okay, it wasn't that effective there, but it was more effective because something in that chemical was more effective to the blood vessels within the penis. 
so it causes the dilation of the penis. So these are the types of refinements. Do we know physiologically what is happening? Why is the prostate growing? Good, very good question. Why does the prostate grow? Yeah, that... We don't... Um, as I said, it grows in every man. We don't... Testosterone has... It's because of testosterone the prostate grows. Okay. That's somehow the testosterone causes prostate enlargement. And <coughs> that we know 100% when we remove the prostate, when we remove the, when we remove the testicles. We used to, not that long, 40 years ago, when a man had prostate cancer, there wasn't medication to change the testosterone, to block the testosterone. We used to bring the man down to the operating room and remove the testicles, okay? Because, like I said, testosterone is from the testicles. That was the fuel for prostate cancer. It's the fuel for prostate enlargement. When we often, the athletes will want testosterone because testosterone, not only does it cause prostate enlargement, it can lead to prostate gr cancer growth, it causes muscular enlargement. So they want the testosterone, but as it can have the side effect of, of stimulating prostate cancer. Okay. That's the danger of that medication. So we know we remove the testosterone. So prostate enlargement is due only to too much testosterone that a man has. And one of the treatments for prostate enlargement, not cancer, they came out years ago and said, we're coming out with a pill to block that enlargement of a prostate that every man has. And people predicted there'd be no more urology. Because what was urology years ago? U urology was practically only seeing men. A woman, women often didn't come to the urologist, embarrassment or whatever. And, but a man had to go to the urologist because he couldn't urinate. And we're gonna come out with a pill to, to sh limit the growth of the prostate. Because I said it can grow th three times, four times, five times the size. Well, thank goodness it didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, I would have found it different. Maybe I would have done GI or something. <laughs> but it didn't work. But don't tell that to the pharmaceutical companies that are still selling finasteride Proscar. Okay. Because, I, as I said, it has minimal, minimal effect on the enlargement of the prostate, which is very easy for us to know. You can do a rectal, transrectal ultrasound of a man's prostate today. A year later, what is it? If it's shrunk in size, it only could be from the man taking the pill because no man's prostate shrinks in size unless they've had radiation or um, they've taken this ProScar, which drops the testosterone. Somehow, the formulation of Proscar, finasteride is a chemical generic name, is used to stimulate hair growth. And so that's another use of it. Whether that works, I don't know. Dr. Trump's uh, doctor told the world that he prescribed finasteride to Trump. That's why he has so much hair. <laughs> <laughs> Other questions? Yeah. Okay, I'll come. yeah um, I read in uh, May, in the May 2019 Reader's Digest, it says a relatively, relatively new option involves shrinking the prostate with a few quick blasts of hot steam administered via a tiny needle in a doctor's office. Can you comment on that? Or right. That? Well, there have been all sorts of treatments used to uh, sh make the prostate smaller. We're making it smaller because the man came in, he has trouble emptying his bladder. He's retaining urine. So originally those men would go to the hospital under anesthesia and we had instruments through the penis to scrape away with 
the obstructing prostate tissue. As I said, if, but if a man's prostate is so, so, so large, we would have to not do it through the urethra, through the penis, make an incision in the lower abdomen, go and literally through the bladder, at the base of the bladder is the prostate, take out the prostate. The prostate could be the size of a uh, acorn. It could be the size of a plum, an apricot. It could be the size of an apple, 10 times the normal size. So we, if you can't do it in an hour's time through the urethra. So now we're using, and we've, used, we've gone through lasers to use light to uh, shrink the prostate. We, this is a steam, the gentleman saying, using steam to vaporize the prostate tissue. We can, some people feel using cold therapy to freeze the prostate is another way of causing shrinkage of the prostate. Some of the shrinkage from the heat or the cold occurs immediately and over a period of days or weeks. So these are good treatments Usually, these minimally invasive treatments are usually if a man is still able to urinate, not retaining too much, and the prostate, normal man's prostate is, say, the size of an, um, a, an, an apricot, so it's not that huge, maybe, you know, two apricots at most uh, that's blocking the, the channel. Yes, again, yes. About 50 years ago, the New England Journal of Medicine came out with an announcement that daily intake of tomato juice or tomato products helps to prevent prostate cancer by 50%. Is that true? Still? It's not It's not true. It's not true. Herbal therapy, part of taking lycopenes, uh, selenium, different chemicals, different metals, different herbs, uh, salt, palmetto, those are herbal therapies that are they're not harmful, they really are helpful for prostate inflammation to block this inflammation slash infection that men in their 30s and 40s and 50s have herbal therapies that they'll take saw, saw like a saw, saw palmetto and other, like I said, selenium and, and lycopenes as tomatoes uh, for treatment. But it's not going to treat prostate cancer uh, <coughs> It, it prevents it from... There's no... The, the, it, it, you can't prevent prostate cancer because I, as I began the evening, every man is going to develop this. The only way to prevent it was if all the men would have, be castrated. Then you could prevent the disease. 100%. Especially in the progeny. <laughs> <laughs> How about the palm? How about the palm friend? Pomegranate juice. Infections, or does that I was going to say, so people always say, do I have to take cranberry juice? Do I have to take pomegranate juice or orange juice? Those juices make can, if you take enough of it, make the urine acidic. And bacteria die in acid urine. But it's expensive. Juices, there's a lot of sugar in it. Rely on the antibiotic to do the job. I have marvelous, just <laughs> awesome.